Hello, I'm really excited to pop in and just talk a little bit today about, about punishment and parenting styles and really the complete inspiration for what I'm going to talk to you today about is Rudolf Dreikers. He was Alfred Adler's first protege and he really took Adler's work and made sure that it got to where it needed to be in the world. So at any rate, he recognized that it used to be that everyone knew what was expected of them, right? We had kings and peasants, we had owners and slaves, we had bosses and workers, and parents and children followed that same kind of a vertical relationship. So everyone knew what was expected. There were traditions that had been passed along generation to generation. There was really no expectation uh, of equality. And I'm not saying that that was right. What I am saying is that that is the way it was for hundreds and hundreds of years in the workplace, at home, kind of everywhere. And then things started to change. Now, Adler, uh, passed away in the 1930s. So he did all of his work before uh, before that. Uh, Dreikers passed away in the 1970s and 72. So he, you know, he articulated all these things well before that. So things started to change. They didn't change on a dime, but when husbands, quote, lost power over their wives, let's say, both parents lost power over their children. Now, it, it happened over a period of time, but what we can see today is that there's no longer a model in our homes of submission that children can unconsciously take a look at and embrace and embody and live from. And that might be tough news for us as parents. It makes it challenging, but it's actually great news, right? The planet is evolving. So it's awesome. Now, you know, we are closer, um, is what I'll say, to, uh, to having equality. It does not mean uniformity. It does not mean that there's equality all over the place, as we know. But we're much closer than we were 100 years ago, 200 years ago, for sure. So. Uh, well, what that means, and I know we've we've talked about the parenting pendulum, which is the way that I say, or the way that I convey these ideas. You can imagine a pendulum where it's uh, all the way over to one side, and it's a uh, it's horizontal, and at the top are the parents, and at the bottom are the kids, and then it swings. If it swings all the way over, well, then at the top are the kids, and at the bottom are the parents and that's not what we're looking for here either uh, but when we look at that first part where the parents are on top which is where many of us will default as parents because there were still vestiges of that in our households when we were growing up and I know you know that that was true for me I think it was true for all of us our parents were doing the best they, they could with the tools they had and um, we hadn't come as far as a culture and as a planet at that point. So now we're here, it's a different time, and we can see um, whether we look around us or we look back and we look inside of us when we were punished, right? Did we stop the quote bad behavior? Yes, maybe we stopped it, but we stopped it temporarily, right? So there's only temporary results from punishment. And when the same punishment has to be um, has to be instilled or levied or, or um, undertaken time after time after time, we have to kind of ask ourselves like, is this really working? It's kind of obvious that it doesn't work, right? It's, you know, that definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, even though it doesn't work, but you're expecting a different result. So when, uh, when we've seen whether it's in our homes or throughout history and other places, people really trying to impose their will, that does incite rebellion. And you can look at the workplace, right? Like 
a good leader really inspires and stimulates their team into suitable action, whatever the action is. They don't dictate it. And if they do, if a leader does dictate and say, this is not right and this is not right, there's, there's going to be a consequence to that. Um, the, their worker is going to leave when they have an opportunity or um, they're going to uh, they're going to be needing to micromanage because nobody really can uh, can give them what they want. So I'm going to leave you with a with an idea about punishment, and it's about it's about spanking. Okay, it could be about anything, whatever kind of punishment. But I'm just going to go with corporal, <laughs> right? Punishment. Um, when we find ourselves provoked, quote unquote, into spanking or any kind of punishment of a child, when we can be honest with ourselves and admit that after we either spanked them or punished them, yelled at them, whatever it was, that we've relieved our own feelings, whatever those feelings were, frustration, inadequacy, whatever those feelings are for you. And when we punished or spanked, that we, we kind of have fallen into the child's whole mistaken belief, mistaken goal of behavior. I know I did um, a deep dive podcast on this, the mistaken goals of misbehavior, unraveling our children's misbehavior. But when we do that, we fall into their mistaken goal of how do I need to belong? Well, I must be the bad kid or I must need to struggle for power in order to have significance, whatever it is. We sort of we sort of took the bait, if you will, um, when we're doing the spanking and when we're doing the punishment, punishing. And, and then the danger is that for many of us, before, you know, before we progress out of this, we will go into guilt. Like, oh, I'm such a bad parent. I'm not going to do that anymore. Whatever. I'm no good. And, and that sort of is like our, um, uh, kind of our, our, our payment, our penance, if you will, for the, uh, the punishment or the spanking or whatever we did. That's not good. If we can admit to ourselves what really happened there and have compassion for ourselves and keep on doing the work to encourage our children, we can, we can move beyond punishment. It is possible. And just two of the big downsides, I mean, I think there's many more but two of the big downsides to punishment are that they are, um, the rewards, the, um, the effects of punishment are temporary. Okay, so they're very, very temporary. In, uh, in our class, we do a deep dive on, hey, what are the actual results of punishment? What are the more long-term results of punishment? And it's a great class, it's a great activity. We really feel it and we can go there. Um, but they are temporary, those, uh, those positive effects of punishment. As a parent, you're observing a very temporary result. You don't know what the long-term result yet is for your child. Um, and, and the other thing is that it's an extrinsic um, method, right? Like the child has to be told, they have to look outside themselves for the answer, for the right way, as opposed to some way of like with some guidance, figuring some things out for themselves, whether that guidance is suffering a natural consequence, I'm hungry because I chose not to eat at dinner time, or, uh, or, or some other kind of natural consequence, or, or some very thought provoking questions that my mom or dad might have asked me like, Oh, what were you what were you hoping to do when you talked to the teacher that way? What was on your mind? And helping them discover for themselves, um, you know, what is, what feels good for them, what's right for them going forward and, and to feel, feel that and come to their own conclusions, more of an internal. So with that, I'm going to leave you um, on this topic with my two favorite questions to ask ourselves. And we can ask ourselves whether we run a company and we're the leader of a company. We can ask ourselves whether we're the leader of our family as a parent, right? But the questions are, 
what am I feeding and what am I starving? Right? What am I incentivizing? What am I disincentivizing? I like feeding and starving. It's simpler. It works for me. Um, but I'll just leave you with that. And if you have any questions about any of that, I would love to hear from you.